Hey everyone. In this video, I'm going to set up a VXLAN between an Aruba CX switch and just a normal Linux box. Now, if you don't know what a VXLAN is, it's basically an encapsulation method that lets you put layer 2 over a layer 3 network. So if you've got a VLAN here somewhere on this network and you want it to pop out somewhere else and you've got some sort of IP connectivity between them, you can set up a VXLAN so that this VLAN will go in there and pop out the other end. So all your broadcasts and stuff can go through as though it's there. So the best way to do this is to just show you. So let's rip into it. All right, I'll start over here at my network. So there's Paul, and I'm gonna set this up between here and Scott's network. Okay, so over here, I've got my router. Okay, and that goes out into the world. Big cloud of the world. And it heads over to Scott, who's also got a router. And that's there. Beyond that router, there's a Linux box. Linux box here, and behind my router here, I've got a CX switch, so 6300. So that's roughly the network. Now on top of that network, we've got a VPN set up. So there's a tunnel between my router, goes through all this lot, not his router, but pops out of his Linux box. So we're running WireGuard here. WireGuard. Just pretend that says WireGuard. Now down here I've got the CLI for my switch and I've also got the CLI for his Linux box. So if I just have a look at his interfaces, you can see, forget the wireless one, we're not using that. That's his LAN interface and that's the WireGuard interface. So his LAN interface is ENO1. ENO1, that's a 1. And I put its IP address in, so 192.168.103.1. Okay. Could have shown you that, I suppose. So there it is there, 103100. And you can see his WireGuard endpoint. I'm not too worried about the IP address of that, but you know there's, there's WireGuard over here too. Okay, so that's the first one. And his WireGuard interface is called WG0. Now on my switch, I've got a bunch of VLANs. The primary one that I use for management is VLAN 10. And that's 192.168.10.10. 226. Now that's not a VLAN that I'm going to attach to the VXLAN and put through here, but I am going to use that for the endpoint. So I'm going to have this, this new tunnel, I'll draw my little tunnel like that. It goes there, goes in the other tunnel, and it pops out a wire guard as another tunnel. And over here it'll be called, I'll just call it VX0. So I'll go through that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get VLAN 50, no 150, which is like my home assistant stuff. And I'm going to send all that down that tunnel. So that's the plan. Okay, so I've got the switch here. I'll do this end first. So what I want to do is go to interface of VXLAN 1. Now, there's only ever going to be one. That's just the process, basically. Okay, so what I want to do is set a source IP for this. Now, you can use a loopback if you've set one up, which is probably what you do in a real system, but I use VLAN 10 for the management of this thing. So I'm going to use that IP address. So 102.168.10.226 and that there. So I'm going to make sure I do a no shut so it actually runs. So now I'm going to set up a VNI, which is a VXLAN network identifier. It's like, like the um, VLAN tags. It's just an identifier, basically, except you can have 24 bits worth of them. So you can have millions as opposed to the 12-bit field for a VLAN tag, which is like 4096. So anyway, I'm going to call it uh, VNI150, just for the hell of it. And I'm going to tell it what VLAN to, to be. So I'm going to attach it to VLAN150. Now, VTEP. That's a virtual tunnel endpoint. So that's the other end. I've got to point it somewhere. So the other end of this tunnel is going to be that, that Linux box. You can see it over there. So that'll be 12168.103.100. That should be round about it. Now if I just go up a, a level here and do show run current context, just have a quick look where I am. So there's the process. Source is here. Uh, no shut, so it actually runs VNI 150, and I've just told it it's VLAN 150, and that's the peer down the other end. So anything on that switch with VLAN 150, which is my home assistant stuff, will now start popping out at the other end. So if I go to the other end at Scott's place, I so just to remind you what's there, I've got the WireGuard link, which is where it will come out. If I do a TCP dump on that, W0, oh, by the way, I should have said it uses UDP port... 4789. If I just look at that, you'll see stuff coming in. Okay, let's have a look. So you can't really see too much there. You can see it's got the VXLAN encapsulation 
and within it it's showing you that there's an app in there now i'll tell you what that'll be that that's my home assistant there and it's looking for all the devices so it's just got constant apps now as you know that's a broadcast so that wouldn't normally make it to scots via a whole bunch of routers but this is what this thing does it lets you put layer 2 down there okay what i'm going to do now is run this tcp dump command on scott's machine like i'm doing here except i'm going to display it on wireshark locally here and i've gone through that in another video how to do that but anyway what i'm going to do is that command over at scott's there and just display it here so i'm capturing at scott's end on wireguard so what's popping out of wireguard and what you can see is yeah proxmox that's my um what do you call it home assistant sending all these apps out but let's have a look down the bottom here once we do that and that and can see it what I want to show you is the UDP port that it got there on 4789 and here it is VXLAN and what you can see is the VXLAN identifier is 150 and that's about it but what I wanted to show you is that 150 you can see over here is three bytes long so 000096 whereas a VLAN has only 12 bits there hence the the lower amount that you can have so you can have heaps on here so anyway and within that is just the normal layer 2 frame so there it is from proxmox going to wherever the broadcast just an app now just for a quick comparison for a vlan tag you can see the whole 802.1q tag is two bytes and not all of that is for the id so you've only got these 12 bits here for the id so that's the big difference between the amount that you can have between a vlan tag and a vxlan id now the thing is back over at scott's at the moment i can't really do anything there because it's just popping out as encapsulated on here on this thing and it doesn't mean much i haven't created this vx0 adapter yet so i'll do that now so on his machine i want to add a link hyperlink add i'll call it vx0 type is vxlan and id is 150 so that's the id as you just saw local is going to be 102.168.103.100 so we'll bind it to that and the remote is going to be 102.168.10.226 which is my switch and dev is going to be eno1 as you saw up here and i'll put the desk port on there which is 4789 just like that and also bring it up so ip link uh, set up dev vx0 i should do so now let's make this bigger show ip link you can see i've now got a vx0 interface so before when i did a tcp dump on wireguard 0 and just looked at udp port 4789 that's where you saw all that stuff coming in but now if i do a, a tcp dump instead on interface vx0 the vxlan encapsulation will be stripped off and you'll just see the arps now that's not really doing much other than showing that stuff that goes in this tunnel here from vlan 150 pops out at the other end here and vice versa now but as you saw i didn't need to do any config at this end for it to start spitting out here there's no handshakes or anything funky it's just encapsulate it sends it down there and hopes for the best and once i set up the other one it pops out the other end here too so that's the basic idea of vx lands and what i'll do is i'll do something again i'll just show not wireguard this time i'll show vx0 so this is at scott's end you can see all those arps and things just popping out as they do and what I'll do back here is I'll SSH my home assistant, which is on that 150 VLAN. So let's just get something organized here. So you can see, no, you can't lie that, IP address, what am I doing? You can see that's 152.53, which is what all these apps are doing up here. So let's say I want to ping, I don't know, 192.168.150. something that's not there. You'll see an app. For it. so I up for 90 then so you can see I'll stop that you can see it if I can stop you see it went straight down the end let's see what else is going down here so not up you can see okay it did a UDP broadcast here to something okay you can see it did a broadcast here from again home assistant this is just stuff going down there so uh, group membership you can see multicast made it down there that came from 150.11 which is something up at this end i can't think what but one of the things on on the uh, home assistant network basically you can see what i'm getting at You've, i've extended layer two down there so broadcasts and as you can see here multicast both going down that tunnel 
So that's basically what VXLAN's about. Okay, so that's just a quick, simple VXLAN setup. You can do more complicated stuff by using uh, BGP to automatically set them, but I'm not gonna go into that here. I just wanted to get this uh, simple so I can get the point across. We can go into some deeper stuff in the future, but I think that'll do for now. So till next time, take it easy.